Hi guys, it's Dr. Mona, and today's video is all about food combining. I'm gonna take you from breakfast all the way through dinner and show you examples of food combined meals in a perfectly food combined day. Okay, so this video is kind of a part three on food combining. This is something you guys have been asking for for a while, so I'm glad I can finally do it. The first video on food combining was just giving you the basics if you're watching through on this playlist. The second video was giving you examples of food groups in each group. And now this third video is actually taking it to practicality. And let's see examples of actual meals, actual breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and things that I actually eat during the day. So some of it I actually prepared and cooked. I couldn't cook like a whole random thing of food. I didn't want to waste food. So I cooked some, and then I have examples of others. So let's start with breakfast. Here's the breakfast section over here. The first thing I always have for breakfast, which I've talked about a lot. If you ever watch my Instagram stories, you know that I'm always having either a green juice or a smoothie. I like to start my day with either a green juice or a green smoothie. Of course, this is after you have lemon water, like warm water with lemon, something like that. I'm not really counting as a food. I'll either have a juice or a smoothie, depending on what I have at home, if I wanna make my smoothie, and I'll also maybe throw in some fresh fruit. Now, you don't have to have both of these. These are examples. You can either just have a green juice or smoothie, you can wake up some days, you're not gonna always have the same thing. You can have some fresh organic fruit. I highly recommend adding in berries into your diet. Organic blueberries, strawberries, these things are so good for you. So good for your skin, so good for beauty, so good for anti-aging. And in the morning is when you're gonna get the most benefit. So remember, when you're sleeping, your body is in a natural state of detox because it's like the one time of day, probably the longest hours of day that you're not eating, you're not drinking, you're not um, exposed to pollution. Your body is just kind of getting a chance to rest and reboot. So the first thing you put into your body in the morning is very important and you're gonna get the most benefit out of it. So organic berries are expensive. You might as well have them in the morning and like really get good use out of it. So, sorry, a little tangent. So I'll either have a green juice, a smoothie, I'll have some fruit. Now that's not enough to fill me up. A lot of times you guys say like, how can a smoothie just fill you up? How can a juice just fill you up? We're gonna break up uh, breakfast into breakfast one and breakfast two. That's kind of how I like to look at food combining. So this is my breakfast number one. So for my breakfast number two, I usually like to have either quinoa, oats, or avocado toast. I guess my avocado toast isn't really in here. And it's not totally prepared, but you get the idea. Um, this is just literally as simple as popping in some bread, mashing on avocado, it doesn't have to be fancy. I tend to go with quinoa versus oats. However, both are totally fine. They're both in the starch category. Quinoa has a little more fiber and protein. It's a good protein combo to fiber, so it keeps you fuller longer. It's just, especially if you're vegan or vegetarian, it's a really good substitute. I make my quinoa, um, I can post the recipe below, I have it on my blog, cacao and stevia and cinnamon, and it kind of tastes chocolatey. Another thing you could do is have the avocado toast. Bread is considered a starch, quinoa is considered a starch, oatmeal is considered a starch. Avocado is a fat. Now some of you guys have asked me about avocado because technically it's a fruit, but it is considered a fat when we're talking about food combining. So avocado on bread is like a glorious combo because fats and starches combine perfect together. Avocado toast, quinoa, those are your breakfast number twos. These will definitely fill you up and kind of carry you over into lunch. So then we've got lunch. And before we get to lunch, let's talk about some snacks because a lot of times you guys wanna know what a good um, food combined snack is in between meals. So remember, we're, we're starting with our fruit, we're getting to our starch, and then we're ending up with protein. So we kind of wanna go in that order as much as we can. And I just also wanna quickly say, my food combining is very 80-20. I'm not 100%, especially when I travel, especially being vegan when you travel, like you can't kill yourself over this, but I'm just teaching you little tips and tricks along the way. A good snack in between your breakfast number two and your lunch is typically a green juice. A green juice that has no fruit, maybe just like one fruit, a mixed green salad, some vegetables. Cucumbers are really good. Um, I, know, I don't know if you guys have ever had cucumbers with lime juice and chili, it's amazing. Any kind of vegetable is always a neutral food, so it's like a safe in-between food. You could also just have avocado in the middle of the day in, in between these meals. You could do avocado and veggie sticks. That's a really great in-between transition. So in-between snacks, mixed green salad, veggies, green juice, or avocado. Now we got lunch. So for lunch, I personally love salad. I know a lot of people ask, 
um, don't salads get boring? Do you, do you need something else? My salads are never boring because I really make them hearty and filling. This is a salad with grains. So I like to add either brown rice or quinoa to my salad if I'm feeling a little extra hungry. Not every day. Um, you can see what else you're eating throughout the day if you want something light. But I like having a salad for lunch all loaded up with veggies. This one has a little bit of brown rice, um, also has a little bit of avocado. So all this is for sure going to fill you up. Between the avocado, between the jicama, the brown rice, this is a great meal. Another thing you could do is have pasta. And I actually wanna go through different kinds of pasta and what the difference is. So if you were to have brown rice pasta, this would be a great lunch because brown rice is a starch and that's what you can have in the middle of the day. Now, if you wanna have red lentil pasta, I would have this more over later on in the day for dinner. So not all pasta is created equal. If you're sticking to the middle of the day, I would use either brown rice pasta or quinoa pasta. Both of these are starches. They're gonna be food combined and you're still kind of moving in the right order. Another idea for lunch that I don't have here is like spaghetti squash, sweet potatoes, a red potato salad with, you know, I like to boil red potatoes, cut up some veggies and put a little bit of like rice vinegar and salt and pepper. It's absolutely delicious. You could do spaghetti squash with marinara and chopped up veggies. You could do um, a stir fry veggie or even like a ratatouille over brown rice. So remember vegetables go with everything. You can have vegetables at any meal, so we're just thinking of little examples to have. I feel like we just listed a ton of really great options that are filling and that are not just salads. Now let's move on to snack between lunch and dinner. One example is chia seed pudding. I love chia seed pudding. Chia seeds are a protein, so seeds you're gonna consider a protein. So this is a great transition snack and something you could have you know, somewhat close to dinner if you're hungry because proteins are the thing you wanna have at the end of the day. And just to remind you, the reason we do it in this order is because starches take two to three hours to digest, whereas proteins take like four hours. So you don't wanna give yourself like a four hour window in between lunch and dinner because you're gonna have to wait a long time to eat. If you do it this way, it's just easier. You don't have to do it this way, but it makes your life easier so you don't have to count hours in between meals. So chia seed pudding, another really good one is hummus and veggies. I love this brand, it's majestic. I like it because it's raw and it's sprouted. Anything that's sprouted always helps you digest it better and it reduces bloating. So we've got that as little snacks in the middle of the day. And then we've got our dinner. So for dinner, this is a Beyond Meat burger. This is their vegan burger. It uses pea protein. It's soy-free, gluten-free. You could really do any kind of burger here that's, I mean, I'm talking plant-based. If you aren't plant-based or aren't vegan, this would also probably be where you'd have your meat because that's animal protein would be your last meal of the day. You could do a black bean burger. Um, there's some, a tempeh burger. Anything that's gonna be higher in protein and more filling is gonna be at this meal. I also included a mixed green salad with walnuts and I wanted to point this out because walnuts are also considered a protein, so any of your nuts and seeds. So I wouldn't add walnuts onto my lunch salad because this is when I have my starches and things like nuts and seeds mixed with like a brown rice or a quinoa is gonna give you a little bit of indigestion. So I'd recommend just having these with mixed greens. It's already a heavy, dense enough food on its own. You don't need to mix it with like a heavy starch. You could have that and then we've kind of gone back to our lentils too. You could just make lentils. You could make a lentil stew. You could have your lentil pasta. All of this really works. One thing to note too, you don't have to go every day eating starch than protein, starch than protein. Maybe some days you only have starches, like maybe you have the brown rice salad and then you also just wanna have spaghetti squash for dinner. Or maybe you wanna have the Beyond Meat burger for lunch and then you wanna have tempeh for dinner or animal protein for dinner, whatever it is that you eat. I'm just teaching you if you do want all these food groups, how to do the starch and then the protein. So I don't know if this was confusing, I hope it wasn't. This is something you guys have been wanting to understand examples of. If you have questions and you want me to do this video in a different format or a different way, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to kind of converse with you guys there and figure out you know, a solution to make you understand it better. Also, if you wanna learn more about this, you can follow my Instagram. I post what I eat in a day at least once a week, usually twice a week, and I kind of show throughout the day everything I'm eating. So if it's easier to see it in real time and just like DM me or ask me questions on there, you can do that too. It's at Dr. Mona Band. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. Um, I can keep doing more food combining videos if it helps. Let me know your questions. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.
One more thing, you guys. If you're having trouble coming up with snacks to fight cravings, go to the link below this video. It's gethotandhealthy.com. And if you guys have any questions there, you can always email me and ask.